What's up guys, it's Josh with Sobriety Wide. Uh, Y'all got me in the office today. I, uh, I, was, I was thinking, oh I forgot. If it's your first time, welcome. If, uh, if, you're, if you're back, you're a return visitor, uh, welcome back. So, you know, I was thinking today about the idea of others. The title of the, the class is Neighbors in Comparison. And I was just thinking, you know, I've been listening to this guy, Alan Watts, and one of the things he talks about a lot is like this whole idea of non-duality and this, the, the thing how, you know, we, we can only know something if we know what it's not, you know, we only know black because there exists white. We only know, um, truth because of falsehood. We only know wet because of dry and on and on and on. And I was thinking about that, how that relates to us and, and the, the idea that we only know ourselves as we relate to others. We really only know uh, things about ourselves as we as we relate to others. So I guess the way you could think about it is what would it be like to be in a dark ass room with no one? Um, what would you know? What would you know about where you were? What would you know about yourself and really what existence is? Like you wouldn't know anything, you know? Without others, I can't. I can't be giving. Without others, I can't be kind. Without others, I can't know love, but I can't know pain. I can't know um, loss. I can't know, you know, all these things that actually require interaction with other people. You know, we joke in recovery sometimes about rejoining the human race, and, uh, and sometimes that's what it feels like because of that isolation thing and how we, we either hate others or, or we compare ourselves to others and we don't think we measure up or whatever the deal is. But the reality is that in order for us to be healthy, in order for us to develop and grow, we have to relate to others. It's just kind of one of those, one of those things um, about being part of this human race. So one of the things and one of the ways we start opening up to others early in recovery, um, and we don't even realize this is happening, but it's, it's through the power of testimony. You know, we know that one of the most powerful components of recovery is one addict helping another, right? No one knew, no one could explain me to me until I met another addict. You know, for me, it was reading Bill's story when I learned like, holy shit, there's somebody else like me, you know? Um, the word of, of someone else's testimony sort of opened this doorway for me to connect to another human being and believe that I wasn't all alone here. And that testimony is important. It's important, you know, it's important that we hear other people's stories. It's important that you tell your story. And uh, this interaction with others is what brings about all the good. Yeah, there's some bad, you know, there's some struggle, but that's what makes us who we are and that's what enables us to grow. So for the discussion today, I just want you guys to talk about maybe how your relationship with others changed from, uh, you know, before your recovery to after your recovery. You know, I, I really, um, I didn't have any friends. I didn't really like people. I didn't, I didn't have a good relationship with, with others, you know, like the pronoun. And, uh, and after my recovery, or, or actually the basis of my recovery was changing that, you know? Um, the book says that as X problem drinkers, users, our very lives depend on the constant thought of others and how we may help them. And uh, that's a pretty deep and bold statement. So that's how important this stuff is. So you guys go ahead and talk about that. Uh, talk about your relationship with others before your recovery and maybe how that's changed in recovery. And then we'll get back, tie the stuff in and get to the workout.